Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, today I want to talk with you about the 90 gallon aquarium and stand that I picked up from Glass Cages here in Nashville, Tennessee. I want to give you an update on where that project is at. It's getting close to where I can add the fish behind me here to that 90 gallon. It's getting a bit real and I'm getting a bit excited. So let's go ahead and do an update right now. So in getting the tank ready, the first thing I needed to do was to get the back of it really, really clean. And I'll show you a um, just a series of videos here that'll just give you a graphic representation of what I'm talking about. The back of the uh, aquarium had to be absolutely perfect so that I could add a background material to it. And uh, even after I shot this video, I cleaned it one more time so that it was... Um, as absolutely close to perfect as possible. You can see it's in pretty good shape there. And then what I, uh, what I did, how I was able to get it so clean was by using materials like a razor blade, a lint-free cloth, some Zep, uh, a chemical cleaner, even some of this Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. And uh, it's amazing how much stuff and actually uh, cake onto a tank. You can get some residual silicone from the factory. There could be uh, just stuff that that is just sort of sort of caked on there that requires uh, some some hard rubbing. And uh, eventually, you can get it out and make you know make it look really really crystal clear. And that's that's the condition you want it in before you add a product like a Velamax, which is a a type of vinyl uh, background. That I like using on my tanks. You can see some of the material here. I like this Velomax. I talk about it in a video and I'll include a link here. But this Velomax, it's easy to apply. It's um, it doesn't involve any you know sticky adhesives. And it's also very easy to remove. If you ever change your mind and you want to go with a different color, uh, you want to do something else, it's a lot easier than let's say if you had spray painted the back of the tank, then you're kind of stuck with that. And to take it off, you're going to need a, you know, either solvents or a lot, of, a lot of scraping with a razor blade. And it might not really look that good. So the Velomax is, is my material of choice. And um, I went ahead and I added it to the tank. For the details on how to add it, again, I'll include a link. It's very easy. After cleaning the glass, you, you uh, separate the Velomax from a clear backing and apply it to the back of the tank, which has been... You know, you wet the Velomax, you wet the tank with just plain water, and then you just attach it, and uh, you scrape the uh, any residual water that, that is between the tank and the Velomax. You then clean out using uh, a squeegee, a product, something like this will do it, uh, or uh, a credit card, you know, anything that'll just scrape the water out. You just work outward, and you get all that water out, and it just sticks on perfectly, and it has a nice, clean look. You trim it with a razor blade, because you always get a little bit over the edge, right? So you just trim it up, and it ends up looking great. So I, now that I had that on there, and I didn't have to worry about water, uh, you know, spotting or splashing on the back of it again, I was ready to add the substrate. And um, I had a couple a couple substrates I was working with. One of them was a lapis luster substrate that was provided to me by John, someone I met here in uh, here in Nashville. And I like this substrate, but it, it's a little bit on the light side. And uh, one of the problems I was having with very very white substrate and the South American cichlids was that it really shows every little bit of waste. And um, it also, I think, uh, washes the fish out a bit. Doesn't let the fish show their their uh, their real color. They tend to kind of blend with their substrate, a bit of a defense mechanism from being hunted from above. So uh, I think the white was washing them out a bit. So uh, so with this substrate, I knew I was going to run into that same problem again, uh, to some degree, even though the lapis luster was a little bit darker. But what I did is I darkened it up even more. And you can see here it's a bit of a, 
I don't know, I guess you'd call that a beige with a little bit of black speckle in it. But I went ahead and I added some of this Imaginarium. This is available at Petco. You can get it online or at the store. The online prices are better and the store will match the online price. But I picked up a, 20, uh, a couple 20-pound bags and I just mixed them together. And you can see here in the, uh, in the uh, cleaning of the substrate how they end up looking mixed. I kind of like the way they looked, kind of a salt and pepper look. One of the problems I remember with that Imaginarium substrate is that it does have a lot of, a lot of dust that floats to the top of the tank. Very, very light for some reason, you know, particles that float. I don't know why, but, but they're easy to remove. They usually come out during the wash, and you can also remove them after you've um, filled the tank because they float to the top. You just simply scoop them up with a net. So I did this about you know half a dozen times. I I, I mixed the black with the uh, uh, with the lapis luster, and then I went ahead and I added it to the tank. And you can see here the final color. And I think between this and the black background and the and the full spectrum lighting I'm going to be using, I think I'm going to end up with the fish popping. You know they're gonna their colors are going to pop a lot more than they're currently you know than than they currently look in the uh, in the tank behind me all the fish in the in the 55 behind me are going to be moved over uh, moved over to the 90 gallon you can see it here it has some bubbles on the front of it but you can see the tank i'm doing a leak test on it right now i'm just going to let it sit overnight make sure it's rock solid no leaks and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and move the um I'm going to move this 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 hang on back filter that I have back here. There's a um that's a marine land marine land filter and uh it's a dual bio wheel and so I'm going to an Emperor 400 I think is the name of it. I'm going to move that over to the 90. So that's going to bring over a lot of beneficial bacteria. I'm also going to move all the decor, the rock the rocks that you see back there, the plants, the cave uh, all of that, the driftwood, some of this driftwood here that you see right in here, this rock and the driftwood, all of that is going to go into the 90 gallon. So it's going to bring over a lot of beneficial bacteria. Of course, I'm treating the tank before I add any of this, before I bring over the, the filter um, and, um, and any of the decor. I've treated the tank with uh, the Fritz complete water conditioner. And then I'm going to be uh, treating the tank with the turbo, the Fritz turbo, which, which gives it a big boost of beneficial bacteria. What that's gonna allow me to do is transfer, transfer my fish immediately, right? Assuming that, they're, that it's temperature matched, transfer the fish immediately over to the 90 gallon. And uh, I think they're really gonna like it in there. They really uh, seem to enjoy moving from their quarantine tank, the 29 to the 55. They started chasing each other less and behaving, you know, looking better. So I imagine moving from the 55 to the 90 with a much bigger footprint, they're going to really enjoy, uh, they're going to enjoy that tank a lot. So uh, stay tuned and I will be sharing with you uh, how the fish are doing in the new tank that should be occurring within the next few days. And uh, I'll give you an update also on Saturday at the uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's at 11 a.m. Central. That's noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in uh, for this for this update. I think it's update number 26, I think. I'll double check that before I post the video. And uh, thank you for tuning in. If you like the channel, if you think you're getting something out of it, be sure to uh, hit the bell and the subscribe and uh, the thumbs up. That tells YouTube that something good is going on and, in, and encourages YouTube to share the channel with other fish keepers just like you and me. All right. Thank you for joining me on this journey and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.